Rocking down to high. It's 4.46 on Thursday. This video has to go up tomorrow. I had a very busy week preparing for the release of the H10 Optic, so I haven't really touched the buggy. So you are going to see what I can get done in an evening, including filming, editing, and uploading. So I'm almost home. Let's see how this goes. So pretty much all of my week was spent on the Optic, but while we're here, I figured I'd show you just a quick comparison between the size of the Optic and the size of the Jimmies. If you look, the wheelbase is basically spot on. I feel, I think this tire, I need to vent, but if that tire was vented, I think we'd basically be dead on for wheelbase between the two. Now, obviously the trail chassis, you're gonna end up with a decent amount more length, you can see over top of the axle. Yep, a little bit of overhang wear. On this one, almost none. Same for the rear, pretty much nothing over the axle, but that one, you've got some there. So the chassis size and shape, this one sits a little lower because it's in droop, or, you know, somewhat kind of a droop, but, and then of course portals, some differences with that. But chassis size in general, quite a bit different, although they're both very compact. That gives you a pretty good view to show the, the difference between the two. But you, know, you can see this one still, everything's on the inside of the tires where this one, you've got a good bit between the width of the tires and these axles are still narrower than the new H10 axles, which by all means, I would love to have that on this, but that's not what that was made for. So that's not gonna happen. A little bit of a comparison. Now we need to get into some buggy work. First thing I'm gonna do tonight is start by swapping out some link stuff. I'm gonna be putting the machined rod ends on and there's a lot of you guys who've probably never seen how these work from Vanquish. So I'm gonna show you the details of how these assemble and why they are what they are. And uh, I think you guys will like that. So I'm gonna start getting some links pulled off so that we can do this. Here is the machined rod end setup. Now, this portion, is going to look very familiar, just like a rod end, but in aluminum. However, you will see it's got a hole there on top and that's the important part. Now you'll take your standard pivot ball, just like you would use in your regular links and drop it in and it'll just drop in and there's no press fit there anymore. It just falls in and you can take it right back out at this point. But then you have these brass pieces. Now this brass piece, you can see on that side, it's got a radius, you know, or a dish machined into it. And then on the other side, it has a cammed machined shape. You can see that it's kind of this, it's a, on an angle, on a slot or kind of a groove, it's just an, it's an important shape. So the dished side is the side that interacts with the pivot ball. And this whole piece is going to drop in down the threaded barrel of the machined rod end. Now, the one thing you want to do is when you do that, you want to line up that uh, the backside of that brass piece with the slot that is more open or, you know, the it will you'll it makes sense kind of when you see it in person. But uh, one side of it, the slot is more offset to the outside where this side is on uh, more of on a center. So you're going to take and you're going to drop that into that. And you just got to get it, you don't have to get it dead on, but just fairly close. And once it's in there, that will then be interacting with the inside of that pivot ball. If you want, you can kind of take and just push it down there to make sure, not a big deal. From there, we're going to take our 050 tip and we're going to take this set screw that's included, M2.5. And we're going to thread this down into that hole. And what this is going to do is this is going to start to interact with that brass piece with that shape. And as you tighten that set screw down, it's going to interact with that sloped cut on the back side there. You can see how it is deeper on the top side than it is on the bottom. So as it goes down, it's going to be pushing this brass piece further in 
to this pivot ball. You can see that brass interacting down there right now, but the more you tighten or loosen this set screw, the tighter or freer that pivot ball will get. So if I come in and I loosen this up a little bit, this pivot ball is just completely loose, just rattles around, well, it doesn't rattle around, it's, it's retained. Like I can't take it back out right now, but it moves very freely. Now, if I tighten it down, get that in there, if I tighten it down a whole turn, now it's got a little bit of tension. It doesn't move quite as free, but it still moves freely. If I come in and I give it another like quarter to third of a turn, now it basically, you have to give it a pretty good amount of force, not force, but like it takes some serious effort to move it. You know, if you held it down, it's just gonna stay in whatever position. Now, one thing that you should do is use a very tiny amount of Loctite on that set screw. It's recommended. It's not a must, but it's recommended. That's, that's one thing. But I'm talking like just a very tiny, tiny amount. And that brass can wear just ever so slightly. But if you get it so that it's about at this tension where you can hold it and you can move the rod end, but it doesn't take a ton of force, probably not much more than a, a regular pivot ball in plastic. Then by the time it kind of just wears in ever so slightly, it's gonna be perfectly free, but just rock solid, no slop. If you ever do need to retension, it's just a matter of coming in and giving it a little 10th of a turn, 10% of a turn. Um, but after I've done that, I've almost never had to go back and do any further maintenance on these. The aluminum almost work hardens, so it becomes smooth and hard and it doesn't wear any further, but it doesn't become sloppy either. And if any tension at all or any slop does occur just because of wherever you, you know, had it set, you can come in, just give it a little bit more tension and it's good to go. That's really the whole deal with these. And then once that's done, all you're going to do is pull off your plastic rod in and thread this on and you're good to go. I do put the threaded hole facing upward. That way, if anything does bang on the rocks down there, it doesn't mess up where those threads come out. So the side that's exposed to the rocks is this clean bottom side. We got the machined rod ends on both sides. Both set screws will be pointed up. This will be the bottom side of our lower link. Then we'll have our upper link where I'll be uh, where on the upper link, since it's not exposed to anything, I'll be pointing those set screws down. And that's so that if I ever do need to tension it, it's just gonna be easier because I'll be able to access them from the bottom side of the chassis. So just since this one isn't in any harm's way, and I guess if any dust or dirt or debris was to get in the area, it wouldn't, it, you know, it'd be easier to fall out. So a little bit of why I'm doing what I'm doing on that, but I've got to repeat this process here four more times around the truck. So I'm going to get to it and you'll see where we're at after it. Currently 545. So about an hour into our evening here, see how much we can get done still. All right. It's 635. We've got all of the links on now and uh, pretty much rated hop back inside and I'm gonna start working on the aluminum send cut send parts. The rear cover there, I need to print the radiator, put the fan on. Uh, the front inner fenders are still just rattling around in there. I need to replace the servo mount that's sitting underneath of there and get those raw 100s put into the new mounts, uh, which I haven't printed yet. So I need to get those printing, get the aluminum parts swapped out, get this fitted back there and see where that puts us all right got the buggy in there i got that rear mount taken off so the motor's just in there loose but uh, next we've got this piece here which is the filler panel and it bolts on to the bottom here right there but this needs to wrap up so we need to put a couple of or a single bend in it at least to make it easy i'm going to be using my four inch duckbill pliers which uh should knock this out pretty easy. I do have a sheet metal brake in the garage, but I don't feel like that's necessary for such a simple, small piece. Make a reference mark where I feel like the midpoint is. And we'll measure to make sure.
Okay. Uh, I'm taking it to the sheet metal break. <laughs> of calibrated eyeball. That thing is dead on. Gah, good at this. So we rode the struggle bus a bit tonight with uh, a couple of pieces for the front area. And I just, I haven't got it in there. I've got uh, one on the printer now. It says it'll be done in 38 minutes and it's already nine o'clock on the dot. So uh, I haven't got the front servo mounts back in. I haven't got the servos back in. Ugh, we'll get there. But I did get the radiator in with the fan shroud and the fan inside of it. I had to print the uh, new mount that sat underneath of it. And that's what mounts everything together. <clears throat> so we've got the, uh, the shroud there. You can see how it's cut around the exhaust pipe. Everything looks good. You can see through to the radiator. But uh, this is just the same motor that I've been running for some time. It's not the final motor. I've never reprinted it, but I think Matt is working on mine and uh, we'll still roll with that idea. Beyond that, you know, I was hoping to get that front setup done. I may still get that done. Uh, what I think I'm going to do is start editing, try and get a bit through that so that I can have some done while this thing prints currently and then hopefully get this in there tonight still and get moving i don't know i i I'm honestly wish that i was a lot further today but sometimes that's how it happens i would love to stay up until 2 a.m working on this but i gotta get the video done so we're gonna i think i'm gonna have to start making some reasonable, responsible decisions, which I'm not very good at. I'm going to keep this video pretty informal for this point. Uh, the guys who are also building these buggies with me in the build along have been doing a fantastic job. Their buggies are coming out so good. I, but so many of them, a lot of them are better than mine and it is showing they're putting so much time and effort into everything. And it looks fantastic. Um, I'm, I, I feel like I can take a little bit of credit for how good that they look, even though uh, mine does not look as good. So <laughs> things have been so busy. And this weekend, I fully plan to absolutely kick ass on this project. Um, this truck will be running and driving this weekend. I said what I said. Uh, that doesn't mean it'll be done, but it'll be running and driving. I talked at the very beginning of this project about the front dig setup, and I took the steps I needed to to execute that tonight, which means that I'm going to be absolutely cutting it to the wire to be able to have that for the event. So another, another tick box against against me. Um, it doesn't. Matter. Either way, I'm going to keep cranking. We're going to keep making progress. This thing's going to be good. And I'm going to make awesome progress this weekend. Next week's video, whole different car. I do have to send the panels off to anodizing. I was supposed to do that Monday. It's going to be Friday tomorrow. I'm going to take these panels off right now so that I can give them to the girls to send to anodizing. That's what I'm going to do. And then I'm going to go start editing. I'm going to let that print. And I'm going to hopefully be able to show you servos in this before the end of it. But at the end of this video, you are going to see photos of everybody else's progress up to this point. Today overall, though, it was a great day. The optic release went fantastic. Um, if you want to see a little bit more behind the scenes of this build, the optic and how some of that went, I've got a long video for the optic that I'm posting up uh, for the members. It's, it's like a, a talk about kind of some of the progress and how some of the things went and how the timeline went. And, and, uh, it was just, it was a super, you know, not like the details of manufacturing, but like how it feels to be involved in something like that and the, the timelines that it take and how you have to hold that in, uh, during the whole thing. Just a lot of that type of stuff. If you're interested in that channel membership stuff, there's a link in the description, check that out. Uh, 
other member videos will keep going up this weekend. I'll definitely have another one for you guys on this buggy as well, showing you where we're at. And the mini trike, because that's just about, I mean, it's it's rideable now, which is awesome. There's some things I wanna tweak and tune and fit, you know make better, but all, it's already ready to go. So lots of member videos, thanks to all the members. You're either going to see some more progress on this before the end, or you're gonna jump right into who the other guy's buggy build alongs. I'll be as surprised as you.